For centuries, the construction of a new lightsaber was a rite of passage accompanied by ritual ceremonies. On the planet Ilum, where generations of Jedi went to build their lightsabers, a lone Padawan was often expected to enter the Force-permeated crystal caves and not emerge until his or her lightsaber was finished. Although Jedi Masters were also known to serve as witnesses. While watching a Padawan complete the lightsaber, a Jedi Master sometimes recited the following words. The crystal is the heart of the blade. The heart is the crystal of the Jedi. The Jedi is the crystal of the Force. The Force is the blade of the heart. All are intertwined. The crystal, the blade, the Jedi. You are one. It is from such traditions that, 23 years after the Battle of Yavin, Luke Skywalker, following the precepts of the old Jedi, instructed a small group of younglings, including Jaina and Jason Solo, Lobaka, Tenel Ka and Reynard Thule, on the construction of lightsabers. The following is an abridgment of his presentation. You may have heard about Jedi Masters during the Clone Wars who were able to fashion lightsabers in only a day or two, using whatever raw materials were at hand. But don't get the idea that your weapon is a quick little project to be slapped together. Ideally, a Jedi took many months to construct a single, perfect lightsaber that he or she would keep and use for a lifetime. Once you build it, the lightsaber will become your constant companion, your tool, and a ready means of defense. In other words, this weapon is your life. One of the most crucial pieces of a lightsaber is the focusing crystal, the most powerful and sought after of which are the rare Kyber crystals. However, though lightsabers are powerful weapons, their design is ideally so flexible that practically any kind of crystal can be used. For example, one of my old students, Kilgal, a Mon Calamari like Admiral Akbar, made her lightsaber with smooth curves and protrusions, as if the handle had been grown from a metallic coral. Inside, she used an exceptionally rare and beautiful Ultima Pearl, one of the treasures found in the seabeds of her watery planet. My first true failure as a teacher was another student named Gantoris. He built his lightsaber in only a few intense days, following instructions given to him by the evil spirit of Exar Kun. Gantoris thought he was ready, and I trusted him. My mistake was not being able to see that he wasn't. You, my young Jedi Knights, must be different. You must learn how to build your lightsabers and how to use them in the right way. The galaxy has changed and you must meet the challenge. A true Jedi is forced to adapt or is destroyed. And although I'd like you to start on your lightsabers immediately, I hope you'll need to use it only rarely, if ever. Prior to the Battle of Rusan, the Jedi used crystals from many sources and ignited lightsabers in every known hue, including purple, orange, and gold. Towards the end of the Old Republic era, however, Ilum was the primary source of most crystals used for lightsabers. This dramatically limited the color range, as the crystals harvested from Ilum produced only green or blue blades. Most sources for lightsaber crystals were raised or quarantined during the reign of Emperor Palpatine. But when the New Republic was established following the Battle of Endor, a number of crystal caches were regained. The exact connection between the Jedi and certain crystals is not completely understood. But it is known that a Jedi can enhance the properties of some crystals by imbuing them with Force energy. As noted in the holocron of Master Fey Coven, the oldest lightsabers use jewels formed by natural processes, but the Jedi can forge synthetic jewels with a small furnace, a few basic elements, and the wondrous power of the Force. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you.